Hello, everybody. It's me, Jose, and it's great to see you all here again. Now, thank you, of course, for joining us on this weekly walk. Now, today on this very lovely Wednesday, I thought we could go and actually explore one of the most beloved and um, you know, traditional board games in all of history, and one that I think we New Yorkers are especially uh, quite fond of. I'm talking, of course, about chess, which is a game that can be found in pretty much uh, various private clubs, uh, homes and many city parks right here in New York City. So first, of course, uh, before we start, let's go over the Zoom function real quick. Now, as you know, all participants are muted, but you can use the chat feature to say hello and comment. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, you can use the Q&A function, and my colleague Desiree is going to be on the back end uh, answering uh, any inquiries you folks might have. Now, closed captioning has also been enabled, but you can use the uh, uh, the uh, hide subtitles button uh, to uh, turn them off. Uh, the images that you see today, they, uh, they were taken from various different sources like the New York Public Library, the New York City Parks Department uh, archive, and of course the archives of the Central Park Conservancy. Now, as you folks know, our mission here at the Conservancy is to preserve and celebrate Central Park as a sanctuary from the pace and pressures of city life, enhancing the enjoyment and well-being of all. All right, folks, so let's get right to it. Now, chess, of course, is just one of those things that are, of course, absolutely timeless. It actually first developed in the Indian subcontinent more than 1,500 years ago. And from there, it would spread to Persia, the Middle East, and then eventually Europe. Over time, as it gained new followers from all walks of life, it eventually uh, evolved to become the game that we're now quite familiar with. And by the late 1800s, uh, chess became more standardized. Uh, from then on, you could, uh, you could really start to see uh, chess organizations being played uh, or being formed rather and the rules of the game set in stone. Here in New York City, folks could be seen playing chess in uh, various different uh, homes, private spaces, uh, like special clubs, and of course in public parks as well. Now there were a few hot spots starting to emerge by the 20th century. So places like Washington Square Park uh, and Union Square, where sometimes you'd see table after table full of players from all skill levels, essentially ranging from very experienced masters to first time novices. Now, this image that we're looking at, this is from 1989, and it shows you some of the uh, different tables set up around uh, 42nd Street, catering to pretty much anybody that wanted to play. Now, this very open sense of playing can still be found today. And if you walk around any park in town with lots of chess tables and players, you'll still see complete strangers playing a game or two against each other. Now, today on our walk, we're gonna focus on how the game is played right here in Central Park. So we begin as we always do, and let's uh, check out this map. So we're gonna start off over at the east side of the park at Fifth Avenue and uh, East 76th Street, just north of Conservatory Water. And we're gonna work our way uh, down uh, the park. So along the way, we're gonna stop by uh, landmarks, including Conservatory Water, on Christian Anderson statue, there's the Terrace and Fountain, uh, the mall, and then we'll end off our walk over at uh, the Chess and Checkers house, appropriately enough. So right now we are here at Children's Gate, uh, basically right at the uh, east side of the park at Fifth Avenue and 76th Street. Now, if folks remember from previous weekly walks and tours, there are roughly around 20 plus named gates around the perimeter of the park. They were named, of course, after various uh, general groups of New Yorkers, like artists, uh, merchants, farmers, and of course, children, as opposed to specific uh, individuals like politicians or war heroes. This, of course, was intended as a way to symbolically open the park to all uh, visitors from all walks of life. And of course, since uh, we're focusing on chess today, I think it's pretty appropriate since, uh, as it, since it's a game that was designed for all ages and groups to play. Now, just like how the park was created as essentially this open democratic space for all, chess is, of course, a game that can be played by pretty much anyone with a brain. Now, as we walk through the gate, we can see these ornamental spider flowers on our right hand side. So a nice little uh, introduction into our walk in the park today. Um, spider flowers are a very common annual plant. They're actually native to South America, and it actually gets its name from the very long 
uh, thread-like stamens that kind of resemble a spider's legs. So you can see these are stamens uh, coming out of the flower right now. Now, these plants can actually grow pretty quickly and quite large, upwards of six feet tall in some cases. Uh, you might have actually uh, seen these uh, in various different gardens before. I know they're actually quite popular to grow since they can uh, attract uh, quite a lot of native pollinators like bees, hummingbirds, or even bats as well. Uh, honestly, I just kind of like how the uh, flowers kind of look with their uh, funky stamens and that whatnot. All right, folks, so we're going to go ahead and continue, and we're going to make a left turn right over here at this intersection, and we're going to head south towards the next stop. Now, after making our way through the winding pathways, we can then start to see the backside of the next statue on our walk. Uh, this, of course, is the world famous Alice in Wonderland statue, popular with not just tourists from around the planet, but of, co uh, of course also with local children that are attracted to its whimsical nature. In fact, if you come here on any given day, you might encounter groups of kids here using the statue as essentially kind of like a playground of sorts. Uh, that's actually the reason why the bronze, as you folks can see right here, is so faded, especially on uh, smooth edges like the uh, caps of the mushroom, basically from decades of children just uh, playing on top of it. Um, it was unveiled uh, in 1959, and it was crafted by the Spanish sculptor Jose de Cris. It uh, basically depicts a number of uh, different characters from the works of Lewis Carroll, including Alice, and I'll see, of course, the Cheshire Cat, uh, the White Rabbit, and over on the uh, right-hand side, that is going to be uh, the Mad Hat. Now, if you look down on the ground, you also notice these uh, plaques with quotes from Carol's books. Now, uh, this particular one in front of us, this is from uh, Jabberwock, which is one of the poems in Through the Looking Glass, which is the sequel to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Now, this book famously also happens to have very prominent themes that center on the game of chess. Basically, the book has Alice enter a world populated by chess figures like uh, queens, kings, and knights. And of course, even Alice herself uh, starts off her adventures as a pawn in the game. Now, chess was such a major part of the storyline that Lewis Carroll actually envisioned the plot to be an actual literal chess game, which uh, eventually uh, Alice actually wins by chess mate, by essentially taking uh, the Red Queen. Now, the beginning of this uh, novel actually even depicts this as a literal chess composition, as you folks can see right here. Know also all of the Alice's moves on the right hand side. Uh, basically, she's able to uh, win this quote unquote game of sorts uh, after about 11 moves or so, which I think is quite fantastic. All right, everybody, we are moving on now. And as we uh, turn around and make our way south, we can catch a short glimpse of conservatory water as well as the midtown skyline just off towards the south. Now, let's go ahead and take the pathway over on the right hand side and we'll uh, take a look at the next stop on our walk. But right as we uh, walk uh, down the pathways, uh, you'll notice a few uh, different types of uh, you know, plants uh, and trees around this area. Many of them are quite unique. And right in front of us, we can see something called the Atlas Cedar. Now, this is a tall evergreen tree that's uh, native to the Atlas Mountains of North Africa. In fact, it's one of the only trees that, uh, that is native to that continent, thriving right here in Central Africa. Now, other types of trees that can be found uh, around this landscape include uh, native sycamores, uh, oaks, and of course, ornamental ch uh, cherry trees uh, of various different kinds. And right down the pathway, we come to another statue that's dedicated to another children's author. This, of course, is Hans Christian Andersen, the author of such famous stories like The Ugly Duckling, uh, The Snow Queen, and Thumbelina. Now, the statue was added around the same time period as the Alice in Wonderland statue in the 19th. 50s. It's basically a work of art by George Lober, who is this uh, Danish-American sculptor uh, who really wanted to bring one of Denmark's most famous sons to Central Park uh, in the form of this monument. Now, since 1956, it's hosted free weekly events that are really quite popular with a lot of uh, local uh, children, such as story time, and these are usually conducted by the New York City Parks Department. All righty, and moving on with the uh, tour, we're going to go ahead and make our way through the winding pathways of Central Park. And at this point, after walking along the south shore of the lake, we've now made it to Bethesda Terrace. Now, the terrace was designed as the main formal area in the park, and it's noted for having a very uh, elegant design with plenty of careful details that reference nature as well as the seasons. Now, right at the center of the terrace, you're going to find this large main fountain. 
which is going to be topped off by the Angel of the Water statue, one of the most famous uh, works of public art uh, right here in Central Park. Uh, both the fountain and the terrace were supposed to serve as the park's architectural heart. So the fact that this uh, actually still attracts visitors to this very day means that it's been really quite successful at uh, doing its job. Now, this, of course, this is a monument that we've examined many, many times before on our walk, so we won't uh, stay too long here. But since it is such a picture-perfect fountain, as you might imagine, this, of course, is really quite an excellent spot for many formal gatherings, including events such as this one. Now, this is something called the Chess in the Park Rapid Open. And since the year 2000, the Parks Department has been organizing this event here at Bethesda Terrace. And it usually brings in thousands of uh, very eager chess fans from all skill levels from uh, around the region. Now, in addition to all these uh, tables that are laid out for folks to use for uh, the main chess tournament uh, itself, but there's also other uh, fun things like puzzles and games for the whole family. It's actually really quite a lot of fun and there's really no pressure involved. Basically anyone can play from kids to grandmasters. And that's what I think makes it such a great event. All right, everybody, and speaking of chess, why don't we go ahead and conduct our first poll of the day. Now, since we are talking about the chess today, I wanted to ask you folks, now, are you a chess player? Now, we of course get all sorts of uh, chess players here in the park. And again, I really do think it's quite a democratized, uh, democratizing thing since you really don't uh, need to have any experience to actually try it out. I myself really am only a very occasional player, and I do highlight that word occasional, but sometimes I will play a game or two, probably very, very badly, but each game to me is uh, honestly kind of like a learning experience. All right, so it looks like uh, most of us have uh, already uh, voted, so let's go ahead and end off the poll and share the results. And actually, the results here have actually kind of surprised me a little bit. So it looks like uh, most of you, about 62%, are not actually chess players uh, at all, followed by 28% at uh, uh, very rarely uh, ever playing chess. But for the minority of you, roughly around 4%, you do indeed love your chess. But that's one of the really great things about our weekly walks and of course our, our presentation uh, regarding chess. Um, since this is actually something that pretty much anybody uh, can pick up, uh, you know, either at home or of course right here uh, in Central Park. All right, folks, let's go ahead and uh, continue on with our walk. And uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and make our way uh, through Bethesda uh, Terrace Arcade. And we're going to take a bit of a detour through this very grand uh, and elegant area. Now, uh, note, of course, also uh, the lovely historic looking arches and the tiles that, that line this space. Now, the arcade was really supposed to evoke the medieval or perhaps maybe even the classical masonry courtyards that were so popular throughout antiquity. You'll also see these frescoes uh, on the wall of the arcade as well. Now, believe it or not, these frescoes really are not that old. They've really only been around for something like about 30 years or so. Now, these are actually the work of an Italian artist by the name of Lucretia Moroni, who took uh, cues from the traditional artwork of her native Milan in order to paint these old looking images back in the early 1990s. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, keep going with the tour. And as we can see here, we're, uh, we've now made it to the mall, which is one of the most heavily used promenades uh, in all of Central Park. These are of course that line with the, the world famous American Elms, which were of course once almost threatened to extinct, uh, extinction by Dutch Elm disease. Today with the hard work of our staff, we're able to maintain these exceptionally beautiful shade trees and keep them from dying off. Now, just further down the pathway, uh, we come to the end of the mall. And basically this is a, an area that uh, kind of highlights these very beautiful uh, late 19th century statues uh, that were put up in this area. Now, this is what's called Literary Walk. And of course it features monuments dedicated to famous writers uh, from centuries past, including Robert Burns, uh, Sir Walter Scott, and of course the newest the statue is, or rather the, uh, the, uh, the first statue here is uh, William Shakespeare. The newest statue was actually placed not too long ago, about uh, two years ago. Uh, and that's going to be called uh, the Women's uh, Rights Pioneers Monument. But the Shakespeare statue, I think is quite an interesting. This is the work of uh, 
uh, an artist by the name of John Quincy Adams Warren, who was known as the Dean of American Sculptors. It was basically unveiled uh, in this area back in 1872. Um, moving on with our uh, tour, we're going to go ahead and make our way uh, right uh, down this pathway, basically right across uh, from the tribe. And as uh, we can see, uh, just further down the path, uh, we can pretty much see uh, this uh, staircase leading up to this uh, uh, building on top of this uh, small rocky outcrop. Now, this uh, rocky outcrop, this hill actually has a name. It's called the Kinderberg. And at one point in time, it actually attracted local children from around the neighborhood, thus the name Kinderberg, or Children's Hill uh, in either Dutch or German. These days, this uh, rocky uh, outcrop is still very much a point of interest around the park, but for a very different reason. This, of course, is home to what's called the Chess and Checkers House, which is a structure that was built uh, in 1952 with a donation from the banker Bernard Baruch. This octagonal uh, red and cream brick structure basically houses uh, the main chess hub of Central Park. And it's been attracting players uh, to this area since the 20th century. Now, today, the structure is currently closed off, but before the pandemic, it was actually quite a popular spot. Now, the interior of the Chess and Checkers house featured several tables where folks could play a game of chess, uh, checkers, or perhaps maybe a multitude of other board games like backgammon or Moncala. It was definitely quite an interesting place. It was one of the few indoor places really anywhere uh, in New York uh, City or in any New York City park where you can borrow game pieces for free uh, and play some games in the comfort of a heated building. Of course, right outside, you're going to see the main pergola. The pergola is basically this large wooden structure that provides shade for chess players when the weather gets uh, too hot. Of course, we've seen uh, recently on one of our uh, weekly walks, uh, the pergola is actually a really great spot for folks uh, in the summertime, especially back in the 1860s when it was first uh, built up. Now, even though we've uh, temporarily closed off the chess and checkers house, I still think it's a very much a uh, hub for chess players in New York City. So every year, for example, uh, the Conservancy holds uh, our annual uh, summertime chess simuls. Now, if you've never been to a chess simul before, it's actually kind of cool. Uh, basically, we invite various uh, chess, uh, chess grandmasters to the park, and they compete uh, simultaneously against members of the public. So. Here, for example, uh, we have the Grandmaster Arena Crush uh, playing uh, about 24 different players just outside of the Chess and Checkers building last year. And before that, we had another Grandmaster, uh, Sabina Foyser, uh, play against a multitude of chess uh, players of varying skill levels. Uh, the event, as you folks can see, also usually features a lecture by the attending Grandmaster where you can learn various different strategies from a known expert. These are actually really quite helpful, especially if you're a novice chess player such as myself. Um, it really does kind of uh, help you learn more of the different strategies uh, that uh, these experts are so famous for. All right, folks, so now we've reached the end of our walk. Now, today we've examined the chess landscape here in Manhattan and how we celebrate uh, this timeless game here in Central Park, both in the past as well as in the present. Now, as we wrap things up, I also wanted to take some time to announce the restoration of the Chess and Checkers House, which we actually started uh, just this week. Now, as I mentioned before, the building has actually been closed since the pandemic, but we here at the Conservancy have been working hard to update the facility to meet the growing needs of the park. So this restoration is going to include uh, fixing up both the interior as well as the exterior of the building, uh, restoring the Kinderberg and the plantings around it and providing a new restroom to the area, making it uh, and as well as making the building more accessible. Now, this uh, restoration effort, this is slated to continue through uh, the year as well as through 2023. But once it's opened up, I think it's going to be a fantastic upgrade to the current park landscape. You can learn more about it on our website, centralparknyc.org uh, slash restoration. And uh, Desiree is going to go ahead and uh, place the link on the chat in case you folks are interested uh, in the restoration uh, that we have coming up in that area.
All right, everybody. So that does it for this week's walk. Now, I hope you can also join us as well for some of our other guided tours, including that of the Hallett Nature Sanctuary. Now, tickets are still available online and on our website. So please be sure to check it out. Now, thank you, of course, for joining us uh, today. Uh, don't forget to check us out on our social media channels, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Our handle here is at Central Park NYC. Now, we're going to go ahead and leave the room, uh, the room open for any last final questions. But otherwise, from all of us here at the Central Park Conservancy, stay safe and be well. Have a good day, folks.